guys, it's May May, and we're back at our composition book. And I wanted to tell you real quick, I took a few minutes and I made for you a playlist that's called Composi Composition Notebook Altering, and I will link it below and in the iCard above. And the reason I did that is because I'm using this notebook as an actual just keeping notes notebook. But if you wanted to use one as a journal or as a mini album, I have one in there. It's a black and white one. It's from years ago. But I do a complete walkthrough and show you where I placed everything. And today I'm going to show you how I made those things. So if you need a little more inspiration, check out that playlist. It is in the description below. Don't forget, May is for making. This is the month of May in 2019. And if you decide you'd like to make something, be part of our giveaway. We have a huge giveaway going on and there's information in the description below. Okay, let's get started. What I want to do today is I want to make pockets for the front and I want to make dividers for the inside of the book. I may make a pocket for the back as well, just so I'll have one. But that's where I'm going to end this one. And the reason is I'm using this as a notebook. That's it. I just want to be able to keep notes in it. But again, if you want to see something that's a little more, um, more journaly or more memory book like, check the playlist. All right, so what I got to decide is what paper I want to make my pocket out of. And I love these stripes with the florals. Wouldn't that be a pretty, a pretty pocket on there? Pretty pocket is hard to say. All right, let's just look through. Just look through some pages and see what we like here. I think the patterns against the florals, this might be pretty as a pocket. Hmm. That might be pretty. But I really like the patterns against the florals. Oh, you know what else might be pretty? And I have a scrap of this, which I could turn into a pocket. Oh, look at that. Hmm. I'm kind of liking it. And I think I want this pocket to run this way. In my other composition book, I did one on an angle, which is fine and it works really well. But for how I'm gonna be using this one, I think a good size pocket like this would help me better. So here's how we create a pocket, okay? Start to finish, we go just like this. We're gonna measure our width again. And I don't want this pocket to be the full width of this page. This is seven inches. I wanna have a little bit of an inset. So I think I'll make my pocket six and three quarters wide so I can have a little bit of an inset. And I think I want it to be four and a half, yeah, four and a half tall. So I'm gonna make a little note of that. How about I do it right here? Cause I'm gonna cover this anyway. Six and three fourths by four and one half. That's just so I'll remember. So that means, because of the style of pocket I'm making, there's several ways you can make a pocket. One is you could just cut your page the right size, put glue in three places, leave the top open, and Bob's your uncle, there's a pocket, right? But that's not what I wanna do. I wanna make a gusseted pocket so I have a little space to get in there. And because of that, I need to add gussets. So if my measurements are six and three quarters by four and a half, I wanna add a half an inch to both of these. So instead of needing a six and three quarter um, piece wide, here's what I need. So this is six and three quarters, okay? I need to add a half an inch flap here and a half an inch flap there. So that means I need a seven and three quarter piece. Does that make sense? Because that's half and half is one inch. And then instead of by four and a half, say this is four and a half, I wanna add a half an inch flap here. So I need this to be five. So if I cut a seven three quarter by five, I'll be able to make my gusseted pocket. I like to sometimes show you, especially that simple, simple math like that, because it will help you when you're designing stuff at home. All right, so let's take our paper and we want to cut seven and three quarters. I'm going to save this. I could probably use it for something else. Five, five. Now, let me say this. <laughs> How tall is this guy? Um, almost five and a half. If you wanted to maybe fold the top down and have, you know, the back side of this as like a fold um, at the top to make it kind of decorative, you could do that. I'm not doing it. We're just gonna make it just like it is. So by five, cut that. You could also border punch that. That would be super cute too. All right, now we need to score this guy. So for scoring, you guessed it, it's those half inch marks that we talked about. So I need to score it half an inch in from the end down here. So that's gonna be seven and one quarter. And I wanna show you what I do. I struggle scoring half an inch down here. So instead of trying, I'm gonna turn this guy around and I'm gonna score it at seven and a quarter also. I'm just scoring it half an inch in from the end. Now I'm gonna turn it on its long side here and I'm gonna do the same thing. It's at five, I'm gonna score it at four and a half. Now if we've done this correctly, this inside measurement should be six and three fourths by four and a half. So let's just check it real quick. Six and three fourths by four and a half. Good deal, we did it. 
Okay, now let's finish constructing that. Now I'm using sticky tape here, but you don't have to. The reason you don't have to is because this is a gusseted pocket. So the adhesive is gonna be on the back side of this paper and hidden from the pocket, so it won't grab anything anyway. Let me show you this first. First, I'm going to cut just an angle across. This is called mitering your corner. So I'm gonna miter this corner just like this. I'm just going from my score here, you see where those scores meet, out. And I'm leaving myself maybe a 16th to an eighth of an inch away from the score. So I'm not cutting the score off, I'm just cutting on this side of the score where they meet. That way, when I fold this guy together, I don't get any bulk because I don't, I really don't want to add a bunch of bulk to this book, especially where I'm putting this. So I'll show you what I mean. So this way, see how it just kind of nestles together? It's not perfect, but I don't have that extra bulk there. All right. So what I was saying about your adhesive, a lot of people ask me this about when and where to use glue and why. In this instance right here, you could totally use your wet glue because we're going to be tucking this underneath it will not get in the way of anything we're doing. But, and I'll, I don't have anything to show you this, but if you take a pocket and you don't make a gusset, say you're gonna tape this down straight just like this, that adhesive in there never dries because it's a peel and stick adhesive, so it's always wet. So sometimes, if you do it that way, just stuck straight down, when you go to put things into your book, it catches on that adhesive on the side and it can be a little frustrating. So by doing these gusseted pockets, you do away with that because this is how it gets stuck down. So your adhesive is out of the way and then these guys don't ever touch your adhesive. They just flow and flow and flow in there, okay? Hope that made sense, I think it did. Maybe I'll do a top tip on that because that's, that's a big question I get. All right, let's peel away our adhesive backer on there. Here's a pokey tool. I had to look for one, isn't that something? I have two now, can't find either one of them sometimes. All right, so peel this away, and then this guy's gonna get stuck down. Now you can do this sides first, bottom first, whatever. I just wanna make sure, let me show you this real quick. Remember we have this rounded edge. We wanna make sure we're, we're clearing that rounded edge, and we have that space all the way around that we were looking for. And I'm going to put this side down first. And I don't mind if there's a little bit of give at this pocket because that's kind of my plan. I don't want this to be so tight to the page that I struggle putting things in and out of it. Now, the other thing about the pocket that we could have done, I didn't do, but you could always do that little half inch um, punch, which I still could do. I'll show you. It's never too late. I say a half inch. This is a three quarter. It's the one that's closest to me. So I can always stick this in here and just kinda, I'm gonna have to eyeball it because you should do this beforehand, but I'm gonna eyeball that this is halfway and punch. Oh, I got pretty close. It's a little more than half, but that way if you put something in there and you need to be able to get your finger in, you can to pull it out. I would use a one inch, but that's what I had close. All right, so there is that. Our pocket is made. Now we can make another pocket on the front if we want. I don't like that pattern with it. Let's just see what we got. We could just decorate it with some pretties. Let's just decorate it. Here's another scrap from the front. Actually, two scraps. Look at these stripes that go this way, but I'm kind of leaning toward these stripes that go this way. That would be pretty to add on there. So then we might could add a sticker. Let's look at some stickers and see if there's a sentiment I really like. Enjoy the moment. Stand tall is nice. Live your story. Collect moments, not things. Best memories. Enjoy the little things. That's a cute one. Stand strong. Believe in yourself. Chase dreams. Oh, dance like no one's watching. I love this take note. We're going to use that in just a second. I love that one. Create your own happiness. That's cute. Uh, life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. 100%. I'm going to take this little tag. And I'm going to take this little guy. And I'm, gonna, I'm laying them upside down over here. I'm going to use them as stickers. But I need to decide what size I want this to be. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it the same width here. This is six and three quarters. So let me cut that real quick. So I ended up cutting it six and three quarters by two and a half. Oh, I'm a little bit long. I need to trim that down just a little bit more. What is that? An eighth of an inch? Let's take that off of there. Yes, that will work. And I think I'm going to um, punch those corners. This is my angle punch. I'm going to use the large angle. I just think it'll add some interest. And remember, if you're making this for yourself, this do it any old way you want. And the best part is you can just kind of play and see if you even like how it looks. 
And if you don't, then you know when you're making this for someone else, don't do that. See, I like that. I think that looks good. So I think what I'm going to do is glue these edges down right here and leave that where I can slide stuff in. It doesn't matter if I don't, if I never use it to slide anything in, I'll show you what I mean, but I'm just gonna glue these sides down. And because of that, I'm gonna use my wet glue because this will, this, ooh, that's pretty. Gosh, this paper pack. Because this will dry and so nothing will catch on it. So a little art glitter glue there, a little art glitter glue here. And then I'm just gonna glue this straight down, kind of in the center. It's really just for looks. Just something pretty. There we go. All right, and now I'm thinking this would be so cute right here or even right here underneath. That's where it needs to go because this is a notebook. So take note. Isn't that cute right there? I love it. This guy I have plans for. I want it to go across like this, but I want to mat it and make it seem a little bigger. So let me show you that. This is black cardstock that we've been using, right? So I'm going to take this and stick it down like so. And then I'm gonna use my We Are um, Perfect Layer Guides and trim that out. I want a pretty wide border. So which one is this one? Let me see what width this is. This is three, nope, I have it upside down. Nope, that's too big. I don't want it that big. Let's do it this big. So this is, well, how, what size is this? I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, I figured what I wanted to do. This is one fourth. This is gonna be a big, border but it's what I want we'll be okay with it I'll show you why I want it I want to make this tag feel a little bigger than it does and remember my tip more passes less pressure that'll keep you from slipping and it'll get you a nicer cut every time if you've never used one of these layer guides these are amazing what happens is they have a little lip and that lip catches on your project and then you trim it to the edge and you get the perfect measurement every time. And the lips are different measurement, like the little edge can be 1 fourth of an inch, 5 eighths, 3 eighths, 1, um, one eighth. So lots of options here. All right, so that little guy is trimmed. So we're gonna go back inside here. I found this little strip and I'm trying to decide if I wanna use it as a little extra interest. I think I do, I kinda like it right there, just to add a little more. And I'm gonna lay this across that like so. Isn't that a pretty pocket? Do I wanna use this piece? I don't know, what's on the back of it? Those flowers, no. Oh, sticker, hold on. We have these sticker stripes. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down on this side. Then I'm gonna make it lay straight. Then I'm just gonna trim it off with my scissors. Whoops my hand off of it. Let me make sure it's straight again. That's pretty straight. Then I'm just going to come in here with my scissors. Let me not be in your way to see. Just trim that away. There we go. Perfect. This little piece, let me show you. I'm going to put it right back onto our sticker sheet. Just line up those scallops and I can use this one later. So we got that little decorative piece and then I want this to go here. I think I want a hole right there. So using my crocodile and the 1 8 inch hole, I'm gonna put a hole in there so it looks like a tag. And I think I'll put some ribbon in there, why not? A little piece of lime green baker's twine. And I'm gonna feed it through the hole and do a little slip knot. And it doesn't matter, it's just gonna live in here. So if it frays, I'm not worried about it. It's just a little extra something. That piece doesn't wanna go in where my finger wants it to go. There we go, <laughs> okay. So we got that and then I'm gonna let this go here. And I don't care what that does, it's super cute. I can't decide if I wanna put this on dimension. I think I'm gonna glue it straight down because it really doesn't need dimension on the inside. So I'm just gonna use some art glitter glue here and just glue this down a little angle. Just something cute in there. And I wanna make sure I don't glue behind it. I didn't think about that before. I'm thinking about it now because I wanna be able to slide stuff in there. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say I wanna put like a little receipt or something in there. That'll just hold it because it's nice and snug. I may not ever use that. I may just let this be pretty but I like it. So don't glue all the way down because you want to be able to use it. But look how cute that is. So now we have a pocket and a little bit of decoration there. Now let's work on making dividers. So for dividers, what I do is I use the paper and I just glue my pretty paper to it and let this hold my divider. Now you might want to take a couple of pieces and even make them a little more sturdy. And let me show you how. What I'm going to do is take some sticky tape. You can take a thinner one, a thicker one. It doesn't matter. Whatever you've got. 
and I'm going to sticky tape closed this sheet to the one behind it. So I'm just going to run tape up and down just like so. This is especially if you're giving this to somebody. You want it to be sturdy. You don't want your dividers to fall out, if that makes sense. And this is a great way to keep this guy in place. Just a little extra sturdiness. Okay, so I've got that there. Let's reveal the backer on these. By the way, if you want any of the measurements or any of the tools that I'm using or the supplies, that's all linked in the blog post that we will put in the description below. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece and lay it down on top of that one and just seal that together. So now what happens is that will be a thicker piece that I put inside um, my first divider and it'll stay nice and sturdy. Now i got to show you another tip and trick. This area to me is no man's land. Past this ledger line, anything you add in this, I want to show you what I mean. Do you see how this curves right here past the divider line? Anything in that area just bulks your album. That's all it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my divider sheet go to that line. So I'm going to get my ruler again, and I'm going to measure from that line out. Okay, so from here to here is 6 and 5 eighths. And then again, I measure my length every time, 9 and 3 quarters. So now I need two sheets that are 6 and 5 eighths by 9 and 3 quarters. So this is a piece that's um, 6 and 5 eighths by 9 and 3 quarters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up to this red line, and I'm going to glue it down. Now, you might remember we have to round these edges. I'm not doing that until I'm done. I'll go back and do that in a few minutes. So what I want to do first is glue this down. Now, I'm just going to glue this with wet glue. You don't have to. Again, sticky tape works fine here. But also, we can use our wet glue here because of the application. We just want it to stay down, so we're perfectly fine. All right, and again, I'm going to line it up to my red line. Line it up top and bottom, and then stick that little guy down. So now I've got it glued down to one side of our reinforced page. Now I'm going to glue one to the back side, and this is what makes a divider. Look how pretty this page is. So this one's going to go right here. This time, I'm going to line up my pages here on the edge so I can come back and corner around them at the same time. Okay, so we're just going to glue it down. So now that I have that glued down, I'm going to take my scissors and run it around this edge to corner around it. So it'll be the same. Oops, didn't quite get my scissor in there just right. I'm trying not to cut my hand as well. So I'm not too stressed about that, but that's a pretty good round to match. And if you need it to be perfect, you can always make yourself a template or a pattern. But I'm just going to do it just like this. That one was better. I like how much smoother that one was. So there is one divider done in my book. I do have to add tabs. We'll do that in a second. Now what I'm going to do is run through and split this section into two sections. So I'm going to take a little bit away here, and then I'm going to take a little bit away here, and I'm going to make myself a reinforced page out of two sheets just like we just did and put a divider here, and then make myself a reinforced page here and put a divider here as well. I've already cut that paper, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll get right back together. have one thing left to do in my little notebook because I'm not going to decorate the back. I just don't think I need to. It's pretty and I really don't think I need a pocket, but you could totally do the same thing from the front inside back here and do a pocket. But all I need are my tab dividers and I want three of them. So I'm going to use my two inch circle punch and my one and three quarter inch circle punch and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So using my scraps, I'm going to go through because I should have lots of scraps left over. Here's a good size scrap. See this guy? I'm going to take my punch, and I'm going to make myself a circle, just like that. And I think I'll do, nah, I'm going to do one. I need six of these, so I'm going to try to get six different patterns. So you'll see I only cut three of my one and three quarter inch circles. Here's why. I'm going to create tabs by sandwiching these guys together like this, 
over my little divider sheets. So let me move these off to the side so it'll make sense. Bring this guy over. Okay, so let's say this is my first one. This is cute. That'll be cute sticking out. So I'm going to sandwich this guy over my divider. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to put glue on half of it to start. Well, actually, I can glue this whole thing down because I'll show you how we'll use that in a second. And then I'm just going to place this using my scallops halfway on the page. I can use the scallops to help me measure just like that. And then I'm going to open that divider. And now I already have glue on that back half. And now I just need to glue this one down on top. Okay. So I'm going to line up my circles and glue that down and then squeeze these guys together just like so. Now I want to show you. My tabs are going to stick out. Do you see this? You may not want your tabs to stick out this far. You can always squeeze them in. In hindsight, I might have, and I'll show you something else I may do because I think this will work just fine. I think I'm going to cut from one scallop to the next. Just see what I get. Look at there. It looks just like a tab, and I'm okay with that. So I'm going to repeat that on both of my other divider pieces. That was kind of a happy accident. Oh, let me show you why I did the little white circle. This little white circle is so I can add it here and be able to write what this is. So let's do the same thing. Let's just see what happens with our happy accident. I think it worked out well. Of course, if you have a tab maker, a tab punch, a tab board, you could certainly do this that way but I'm kind of playing and kind of liking the way this is looking. Look how cool that looks. I like that as a tab. And then I can write what that tab is right there. All right, so I'm going to do the next ones. So now that I've finished these tags, I think these tabs are a little too far out for me. And I'm going to try one more thing, which I think will work. You know what? We cut this little scallop off. I'm going to cut one more off. And then you guys will be able to know how to do it at home from the beginning. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to cut one more scallop side off. Just like so. But I still love how this tab looks. It looks like a little half flower. So that's cute. I'm going to run down and do that same cutting all the way down. This is what I get for not pre-planning. <laughs> I don't pre-plan a lot of my videos, and I certainly didn't pre-plan this one. I just had it in mind to do it like this. But I don't like how far they stuck out, but I do like how this is looking. And let me show you when we close this up. Look how cute that is. Those tabs are perfect little scallops sticking out, and I can get to my pages exactly how I want to, and I can write on them and tab what's going to be in there. Again, this is a desk journal for me. This is something I'm going to keep on my desk to keep notes in because I have so many things to keep up with here as of late. But just an idea for you, a little scout, a little um, composition notebook altered. Again, this is not a project for everybody, for the, but for those of you who need something like this, it's a good idea. And I think you'll enjoy having one of these around. They're also pretty just to carry around with you and to use them. And the more you use them and the thicker they get and the more worn in they get, the more fun they are. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little altered composition notebook. And I want to see what you guys are making. Remember, May is for making. And we have a linky party going on in our blog post, which will be linked below. So you can have photos of what you're making this month. I cannot wait to see them. Thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.